Good and morning, morning and top of the morning to you again. <laughs> We're still in Ireland. We're in Dunleary, yes, which is just right outside of Dublin because they're not doing uh, accepting cruise ships right now because of cargo. So that's where we are starting our day. <laughs> yeah, so it's a tender port, which means we have to get off big boat on little boat and go to land and ride a train. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna train and you'll see how it yeah. works. We're gonna start off with some breakfast, but mm -hmm. we are doing some free roaming, hopefully of Dublin today. Yeah, let's get it started. Let's do it. Bye. <laughs> Last tender, 6.30. Let's hop to some international cafe. Well, pretty quiet down here, which I like to see. Fruit, yogurts, oh, muffins, little frittatas or egg bite looking things. And of course, the usual suspects of sandwiches and pastries. There is an iced Americano, a breakfast sandwich. I got mushroom frittatas and a bran muffin. So you went zucchini frittatas. Mm -hmm. Nice bran muffin banana. What is your fancy drink? It's a vanilla bean latte. Wow. Don't know, I've never had one. All right, let's eat. Well, we are all fueled up and ready to head ashore. Let's see about tendering. Wonderful. <laughs> Whoops, we've had a mechanical issue with this tender, so we're gonna go to the other tender lobby. Hello again, Piazza. <laughs> oh, up here past the spa entrance. We haven't even really been up here. We got waters and seltzers available right here. <laughs> got some steps down. Yeah, it looks like we're lifeboating it up today. We're all cozy in our lifeboat seats now, ready to rock and roll. Dunleary. Well, hello, Dunleary. I think I already did say hello to you, but hello again. There we go. It's pronounced Dunleary, y'all. It's quite the windy little trail of tunnels and things to get out to the city. Yeah, but you get to learn a lot along the way. It is Sunday here today. We are heading toward trains. I like signs. Yeah, signs are good. Wow, I know I said I like signs, but I mean, there's one and there's one and there's one. They're all the same. I guess it's no matter what bus you get off of, you'll have a sign to greet you. Yeah. That's a nice little welcome area. Here we go. The final turn across the street. I see the train station. Oops, the escalator is currently stairs. So I think we'll just, you know, take the stairs. Oh, we got three platforms. Ticket machines are up here. Oh, tickets have been acquired. Now we just have to get down there to the track. Looks like these stairs ought to do it. And it was two and a half euros or five euros for a round trip ticket. So 250 per way per person. Well, we're walking further down the thing. I think we've gone too far because we're, we've, in, New we're in New Jersey now, apparently. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened, but anyway, we're, we're coming down here to where there's a, the crowd thins out a little bit. Oh, we've picked up the trail from yesterday. Did you see that silly video? Anyway, I think this is our good luck spot to enter the train right here. Number one. Yes. All right, in we go. It's a little crowded here in the train car, so tight quarters. But I know everybody. <laughs> nice economical way to get into town, I approve. <laughs> well, after about 20 minutes, we have made it to the Pierce station. We could have gone all the way to Terra Street, but Pierce no, is going to no, be more <laughs> convenient to our plan. I'm much more it didn't happen. <laughs> Welcome to Dublin proper. Oh, there's a marathon or a mini marathon happening down here today. We're heading toward Marion Square Park. There we go. Let's jump into this park. <gasps> Look at all this green space. Well, we're wandering around to some uh, bullet points on a free tourist by foot self-guided tour that I found. And one of the highlights is the Oscar Wilde statue here in the park. That's wild. There's a few little statues and art pieces around here, actually. All right, Oscar, we will catch you later. We got things to see. Yeah, I kind of like the sort of pale colorations. All right. Uh, 
let's jump back out here. So this road is leading us down here past the National Gallery, which I think is free to get in and it's mostly art. Oh yeah, I see the words free entry. Probably roll past that for now. Ooh, burritos. <laughs> Walking by Trinity College now, we're finding lots of stores and things are closed because it is a Sunday after all. So we made it to Trinity College. The Book of Kells, uh, you have to book a ticket in advance. It is about 18, 19 euros and they're sold out for today. So I think we're just gonna wander in here and see what's up. So there's a bunch of things that you can learn about here at Trinity College. What's a buttery restaurant? Sounds delightful. Oh, look at this property, though. So there is the entrance to the actual Book of Kells across the way. I did a little research on it. It's uh, some, some something that's tied to the Gospels of the New Testament, and it was considered one of the more culturally significant artifacts, I guess, in the history of Ireland. So if you're here, try to get that ticket in advance. I think we are going to jump out here and have a coffee. Oh, there's some coffee shops. Wow, there are a lot of coffee shops right here. Let's see if we can continue wandering down toward what I believe is St. Andrews and find some semi-local coffee action. Oh, that's not going to cut it. That's that's not going to cut it right there. Oh, we got Cartier, Swarovski, Dior, and Starbucks. We've made it to Guinness. Oh, no, not quite. Not quite. Oh, we popped into a little gift shop called Carol's to see what's happening. This is multi-levels. Ooh, lucky Irish socks. I'd be lucky if my foot would fit in these socks. Gosh, I got a big foot. Oh, sheepy magnets, bottle openers. Oh my gosh, okay. It just opens up into a world of everything over here. Oh, look at these handmade soaps. They smell amazing. Oh, guys, smell this one. It looks like mint chocolate chip. Whoa. Lemon. It doesn't smell good. This one looks like a beer. <laughs> Smells like lemon, that's good. An Irish whistle. Oh dear, you know I collect strange instruments. All right, must resist. Oh, these stuffed sheep, they got all these ducks. We could hide all these ducks on the ship. <laughs> They're very large. Uh, Carol's Irish gifts, that's what it was. All right, back out into the world. Whee! I hear somebody playing safe and sound on the guitar or something. Wow. We're just gonna marvel at some architecture. Oh, we've also found our way to St. Andrews. Let's basket some of that. Oh gosh, it's tall. There's the Molly Malone statue. We'll get a little closer peek at old Molly Malone there. And the guitar player too. <laughs> and I thought they said that she was a talking statue. Maybe I made that up. I thought she had a QR code somewhere, but um, hmm. right, we've jumped across the street now to try to get a sort of backlit. Let's see. Oh yeah, the camera will lighten us up nicely. Well, what we're learning here so far is that Sweet Home Alabama is a popular tune and that people love groping the Molly Malone statue in place. Up, oh, yep, there they go. <laughs> All right. I think it's a thing. It we must research, be good though. luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't participate. Uh, the group has voted to come across and get in on a little um, statue op photo op. <laughs> Excuse us, Miss Molly. Oh my, all right, let's, oh, is he playing Journey now? <laughs> Oh, this has brought us out to, down there is the former House of Parliament, I believe, which is no longer used from my understanding. Let's wander down this way. We're still searching for some coffee. Well, this also puts us going past the bank, which is now a bar. The bank bar and restaurant. Here's all the things I was picturing when I thought of Dublin, and what it would look like. Oh, here is a cafe also. I don't know if I know how to say, oh, he's closed. Oh no, just around the corner. Ooh, they are kind of um busy. What well, is very cute down this little side road that we've stumbled down. Look at all these muffin flavors, shiny pastries. I see a giant case of um scones up here. So they've given us a number, they'll bring the coffee out to us. I got a rhubarb crumble muffin and a cherry almond scone. <laughs> How does one pronounce the name of the cafe? This is where we are. 
However you say that. Hey, that was my nickname in high school. Nice. Well, that was delightfully refreshing. Let's continue in this direction. Pretty sure we're passing through or near the Temple Bar neighborhood. Sounds like a bar, but it's actually an entire neighborhood full of cool stuff. And buses. Ooh, this feels very epic through here. Dublin Castle. Wow. Hopefully not closed on Sundays. We'll see. Well, I think we found it. Wow. It gets cooler and cooler the more you go. Oh, and then there's a giant crane. So it does look like they offer paid tours and admission. But it seems like you can wander the grounds and see some cool stuff for free. And let's come into this little central courtyard looking area. Wow, yeah, all the cobblestones on the feet. <gasps> Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Look at these cobblestones. All right, I've stepped back into a corner now so we can appreciate it in all of its gloriousness. I like the sort of scales of justice up there. Yeah, I just like looking at architecture. Yeah, Dia's taking all these architecture pictures. That sky is so blue. Yeah. Medieval Dublin Castle. Well, that's what it looks like on the inside. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Drone footage. There's a little statue man down on the other side with a lion. Oh, we totally missed this giant lion in the middle of the courtyard. There was a tour group standing in front of it, and then when they moved, we're like, ah, oh, hello. Oh, bless you. Guys, we found a walking tour, and we can glean information off of them. Oh, let's just listen in, shall we? <laughs> Well, we're wandering around this property and we noticed this thing about the first fragments of biblical papyrus from Roman Egypt, which is a free exhibition, and it's only 220 meters. That could be interesting. All right, so over here past this side of what I believe is called the Chapel Royale, there we go, Dublin Gardens and the Chester Beatty Museum. Oh, well, there's the entrance to the garden. Oh, yeah, Chester Beatty Library. Perfect. Okay, guys, the side trip was worth it. It's stinking gorgeous in here. I like it sort of like modern building right behind, like, vintage old building. We're wandering into a zone of art and flowers. Here is the Chester Beatty Museum. Oh, they even have a sign up here about the fragment. Free admission. Washy washy. Oh, I hear creaking. I think it's this people walking on this thing above my head is making a creaking sound. Yep. Well, backpacks are not allowed up there, so we do have use of free lockers to stash our stuff. No bags, no hamburgers, no drinks. Let's lift. Welcome to the first Fragments exhibition. Ah, uh, this is the creaky floor I was hearing people walk on from below. We do have an audio tour option. Okay. Ah, uh, is this a translation of uh, a papyrus maybe, or just a, more information about it? Hmm? Maybe it's just more information about it. It's large print so you can actually read it. There's some banding on that one, but we're just going to have a wander around and see what's going on in here. We won't go case by case, obviously, and look at everything, but kind of, I mean, we will. But you will have to come here on your own and see it with your own eyeballs. That's cool. That's very nice. It's only here to September. Oh, that's right. So most of this is from like the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th century. I guess AD or CE. Most people could not read at the time. They had to rely on audiobooks and whatnot. <laughs> no. Not true. <laughs> I'm making things up again. Like, you know, lots of little things you have to like peek. Oh yeah, peek into the magnification. And it's not all just papers either. There's like artifacts and things in here. Well, it says it's from about the year 300. That might be one of the oldest things I've seen in here. It's in such good shape though. Got one from the year 164. There we go. That might be the oldest thing in here. Right, let's come back out across the creaky bridge. Whee! And now, the exit survey. All right, I guess we will jump back down. There's a ton of stuff in here. Oh, there's even a roof garden here. Wow. That might be worth a look. Well, let's check out this roof garden. Oh, all right. So roof garden. Yeah, we can get a few views out here out of the windows. Get a 
peek down. Oh yeah, this is kind of uh, the garden area where we entered. Kids are chasing birds. Get them birds. You can do it. Just kidding, no you can't. Rooftop spin. Woo. Oh, it is very bright out here. It's beautiful though. It is, just like me. <laughs> you are beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> oh. All right, now let's continue our journey. Outward. Inward and then outward. Let's retrieve our stuff. Oh, next stop, Christchurch. Famous fish and chips. Oh. All right, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. So there we have Christ Church Cathedral. Gorgeous. You know, the complex goes all the way down there. Yeah, it's 10 euros 50. I'm not sure how you say that, but 10.50 to get in uh, per adult. We're making our way slowly down toward a bridge to carry us across the water, getting better and better peaks at the other sections down here. Burp, burp. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, the buses have cleared the way. <laughs> we have all these views. Oh, look at that Guinness storehouse just teasing us. So one thing we definitely wanted to get in was either a tour of the Guinness operation or a tour of the Jameson operation. Since I'm more of a whiskey boy than a beer, beer boy, and yeah, we're ne not, neither one of us is really into beer. We're gonna see if we can cross a bridge up here and find Jameson. Oh yeah. We had to turn around and admire the beauty of the booty. Oh, it's dinging at us. Ooh, look at this. That's pretty. That is pretty. Well, this has brought us down by the four courts area. We are in the home stretch now. So I think we've come probably about a half a mile over from the Christchurch area. Let's do this. We finally made it to the Guinness tour. All right, we're getting ready to do this thing. Just kidding, it's Jameson time. No, you're not closed. Now we checked online, there were plenty of appointment spots for today. Oh, I'm getting excited. Oh, there's another Carol's Irish Gifts location over there. That's really funny. Let's just bask and appreciate this a minute. <laughs> well, it is very nearly tour time. Let's go in. We have signed up for the distillery experience. Ah, uh, super cool chandelier action. Uh, we've checked in, we've collected our tickets, and we are ready to learn about some whiskey. Bow Street Experience. That's the official name of our tour. 30 euros per person. Up we go. Oh, we've got the Wall of History. The first 10 minutes they said are self-guided, and then we roll into the guided portion. There's a scan here to unlock our history. Well, there's a good little bit of learning to be done out here actually before the tour. We can learn that a barrel of whiskey weighs three things. So 1780 this distillery, I guess, was established. You can take as many photos as you want, and here's the videos. You can take snippets of videos, I just asked you don't record the entire tour. So we are good to do snippets of video. We are moving into the first room now. Jemison is named after our founding father, John Jemison. Underneath the name is the family crest and motto. It all started back in 1780 when John Jemison, an enterprising Scotsman, set up shop right here in Smithfield, County Dublin. While the spirit of Jemison does certainly still live on here in Bow Street, County Dublin, in the capital of Ireland, the heart of our company now beats in the south of Ireland, in Middleton, County Cork. Well, one taste, and you'll know why. And that is the cheesy line that I have to say. <laughs> That's the history and the story of John Jemison and the company, guys. That's the first part of your tour, your history lesson. All right, let's move into the next section. What is this, the process room? So I'm going to explain how Jemison whiskey is made from grain to glass. We will then filter this and extract a liquid called wort. Then we will add yeast to the wort. And what we're doing, guys, is we're basically extracting the alcohol out of the wash. I'm going to ask you to pick up a little card. We're going to spray the pot still on first, just like a perfume. We're going to spray it on and then give it a smell. Is that working, guys? I'll help you if it's not. So, spray it on, Ooh, shake it out, give it, it smells smell. good. I don't know how to explain what it smells like, but it smells like So, pot still smells spicy, robust, full body, aromatic, very strong alcohol smell as you would 
imagine spray on our column still. Same thing. Let me know if you're spraying and not working, guys. I'm gonna tell you they're not working, alright? Visual smells more like alcohol or hand sanitizer, yeah? Not as spicy as the smell of alcohol. Yeah, it's a vodka ish. Alcoholic problem. Interesting. Yeah, thank you. The American barrel comes from Kentucky in the US of A, pre seasonal with bourbon, so it used to mature bourbons. Sherry Book is from Perez in the south of Spain, pre seasoned with Aurora, so sherry. Give it a good smell, guys. Get your nose right in there. So we're just sticking our noses in, holes on the tables. They were. Sherry is a fortified wine. But now it is simply time to leave the whiskey and the wood to their own devices. Time to head to tasting phase three. Might be my favorite phase. Sit or stand, just please save that middle one for me, guys. I'm gonna demonstrate with this one here. You should all have three whiskeys and one glass of water. Before we start, can I confirm that you all have that in front of you? Yeah. Yes, you do, great. So you'll see the three whiskeys there in front of you guys. We're going to begin in the middle with our Jemison Original, which of course is the classic. Then we're going to move on to the left with Jemison Preston. And then we're going to finish on the right hand side with Jemison Black Barrel. So we're going to taste them, excuse me, in that order. We're going to rotate the glass like that. So the whiskey inside swirls around. We're going to bring it back to flat. Once you get your nose right in the glass, reach. Yeah. Now at the same time guys, while your nose is in there, I recommend that you open your mouth like I'm doing here. And I'm well aware of how stupid I love doing it. Okay, so open the mouth at the same time. Opening your mouth will open oh, your airways. And by opening your airways, you're going to stimulate your sense of smell and your taste buds. So, have you noticed the difference? I think it's a bit more intense, yeah. I find. Yeah, I, I can almost yeah. taste it doing mm -hmm. that, yeah? For a start, you should be getting a lot of spice. Spice comes from the unmalted barley and pot still. Smoothness, smooth texture is from the triple distillation. Fistity sweetness from the malted barley. Vanilla, toasted wood from the bourbon barrel. And then dried fruits and nuts from the sherry bush. And then obviously alcohol as well. This is 40% alcohol as all you can eat. So the Irish word for cheers is slancha, and that means health or good health, okay? Three, two, one. Slancha! Beautiful, really good. Cheers, guys. Not that bad. Out we go. Now, out through the gift shop and to the bar where we get to turn our tickets in for a free beverage. Cue this way to collect your drink. There are the choices. We can just get it on the rocks or neat. Ah, I think that was a special one they said we could get. Yeah. So we got one of the ginger versions, one of the orange versions, and we're just going to sit out here enjoy. and enjoy <laughs> in the patio. <laughs> so I think after tasting all three, we are still team original. The black barrel, or whatever they call it, was really good. Yeah, that was the second favorite. Um, and I guess that crested you can only really get like in the UK, Canada, like really limited markets. I'm kind of team original. Mm -hmm. Jameson's always been one of my favorite whiskeys. I'm glad we came here today. It's a great tour. What I liked about it was the size in the tour group wasn't too many people, so you really got to like fully embrace everything he was saying. The screens were really neat. Um, it doesn't cost that much, and it's guided, which is really nice. And then you get a drink at the end. So recommend this tour when you're in Dublin. Stancha. Stancha. So the plan from here was possibly to walk back over and see St. Patrick. Is it called St. Patrick Cathedral, right? The church over there. Um, but that's about a mile away, and then we would have probably about another mile to get back over to the Pierce Street train station. We stood the whole time on this tour. There were some seats, but you know, we typically are like, cool, we can stand. So our feet are a little oomph, and our time is running a little short. So I think what we're going to do, as we were walking over here, we saw a tram station that was called like the Red Line. We should be able to go right back over here, hit that Red Line tram, and that'll almost take us right to the Terra Street train station, which our ticket is good for. And that'll take us straight back to the Dunleary train station with minimal walking. So I think we're going to enjoy our drinks, wrap it up here, and then transit back to the ship. We've had a pretty good long day of seeing stuff. I know we, we didn't go in a whole lot of stuff, but just walking around, enjoying the atmosphere, the architecture. I say that's a good day in Dublin. It's lovely. Yeah. Bye. All right, Mr. Jameson Barrel Carrier. <laughs> Let's head back out this way. Come back out to the street and hang a left. Hey, there's a train now. Um, we're not that fast. 
I don't think that was the one we needed anyway. I think we need a different line. So for three euros, 3.4 euros. Is that how you say this? I'm learning. Not sure. Uh, that should be good for us to get over to the uh, connecting station. That looks to be our ride. Yeah. We've hopped off at the Abbey Street Station. Now we just need to cross this bridge, hang a left, and that should bring us to the train station proper. A little bit more bridge basking footage. Welcome to the train station. Ooh, the moving stairs are in motion at this platform. Very nice. And welcome back to Dunleary. Well, now we just do everything we did this morning in reverse and we should find ourselves at a tender station. Well, we've got almost an hour and a half until last tender. I think we're we did our time well today. Oh, uh, yeah. But you don't want to change that. No. So. Back through security. Oh, they've had the face towels. They've had the water. paper for tomorrow on the bed which is Liverpool. Good, Good evening. evening we are hungry. So hungry. Yeah, I was hoping to get some Irish food today but our time just ran out and we didn't eat lunch really. We had no. snacks. We try to do as much as possible. Obviously oh, yeah. there's so much you can do in Dublin. I feel like we scratched the surface but we'll definitely have yeah. to come back. Yeah and for the first visit yeah. you know we like to walk around take mm -hmm. a lot of pretty pictures see some architecture see the outside of a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we were going to possibly go through the insides of some more things, but I don't know. A lot of things have admission fees. Not that that's a big deal. Well, the other thing um, was it was pretty support. busy today, so getting trains oh, back yeah. was a concern, but we're, we're here, we're on the ship, we made it. So, that's yeah. right. But I enjoyed what we saw. Absolutely. Had a heck of a good time at my Jameson tour. That was really good. I enjoyed that it was um, like, you know, somebody was telling you yeah. what you were doing. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we had looked at Guinness, and Guinness was twice the price, twice the amount of time, but it was all self-guided. So, I mean, we might do Guinness in the future, but like I said, I'm not really a beer boy. Can't help I'm a it. whiskey boy. You like what you like. <laughs> That's it. So, I like what I like. You know what I like? Pizza. So, I think we're going to run to Alfredo's and see how long the wait right. is. If it's crazy long, we'll hit the MDR. But yeah. I think we're going to go get the included pizza pasta option. Sounds delicious. And then you know who's on board with us tonight? Pete Best. Do you know who that is? The original drummer for the Beatles. It's pretty cool, who was right? Replaced by Ringo well, Starr. Yeah. Um, Still very cool, though. <laughs> so there's an interview with Pete Best in the big theater tonight. We don't want to miss that. No, it's yeah. to be the best thing we've done in a long time. The best right. around. Anyway. Let's get out of here. <laughs> well, right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> It does not look busy at all down here. That is delightful. Very delightful. <laughs> right in we go. Got a little table for two right by the window. <laughs> Let's look at this menu. So like I said, this is an included option, which I do like. Oh, look at that Hawaiian pizza. Our server called us a princess and a king. That was so nice. <laughs> I ordered a Jameson and ginger ale in honor of our distillery tour today. Slancha! I 
had to get this delicious Hawaiian pizza. Now, interestingly enough, I think they've got chicken on their Hawaiian. So you got what appears to be ham, pineapple, and chicken. We are done with dinner. The casino is closed. I guess we got peeking here at some motions. Oh yeah, a lot of the dealers were at their tables already, so I figure I won't record too much of that, but we're heading up to the Peronza Theater. So we've got a comedy show in here right now, starting very soon. I don't know. Well, there's a lot of seats over to the side. We're just gonna settle in here because after the comedian, which I probably won't record the comedian, is Pete Best. You guys are ready for some entertainment this evening. Yes, you are going to love this guy. He is hysterical and he puts on such a great show. He will leave you laughing and in tears. So please put your hands together for your comedian, Josh Daniel. If you have empty seats next to you, I have a feeling it's going to be crowded. If you do have empty seats, let's try and utilize as many as we can so everyone has a chance to watch. We've got plenty of seats down front as well. And don't forget, this will be filmed and put on your stateroom TVs also. But before we go, one more time, put your hands together for Josh Daniel! So coming up next, we've got Pete Best, an interview with the cruise director. Welcome to the Princess Theater. We've got something so special for all of you. And it's just so fitting as we are preparing to go into Liverpool tomorrow. I can't think of a more perfect time to get us in the mood. So please welcome to the stage the man who put the beat in Beatles. The original drummer of the Beatles, Pete Best. Give me a kiss on the cheek. How cool am I? Come on, let's have a seat. It was your mom's idea to put a rock and roll coffee club in the cellars of this house. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, she was watching the television one night. And, uh, and she, I think it was about the Two Eyes, famous Two Eyes Club in London. The back of Haynes Green looked like a construction site for about six months while we were working away. But we finally got it done. Who was the first group that played there? Well, a little bit of a story about this one, because the first group, the first two quartet, broke up a couple of weeks before the band was due to play at the Casper. George turned around and said, Mo, said, I might be able to solve the problem for you. He said, I know a couple of guys who are basically unemployed at the present moment. Lo and behold, who did they turn out to be? John Lennon and Paul McCartney. <laughs> And I spoke to George Martin and turned around and said, you're not being kicked out. He said, I didn't mean that to happen, Pete. He said, what I said was, because your drum sound is so big and we can't handle it, right, we're going to use a session drummer. George Martin was there and he basically turned around and listened to Ringo and the following week, right, the session drummer was in. Right, and Ringo played tambourine on the first record. You really came back and you resurrected your musical career. 1988, you had TV appearances and chat shows all over the world, six world tours, six CDs, including the multi-platinum Beatles Anthology One, three books, one of which made you a best-selling author, a documentary on your life, which was aired in 148 countries, and a film on your life, which is about to be made. So you bounce back, Pete, and honestly, you look like a happy guy. Good night, God bless. I made it all go with you. Oh, I forgot to point out sort of like the, it's like a fortune cookie floor. I'm used to it, you know, some chips you come in and it's like, oh, here's what day of the week it is. No, here you have like, sayings, things. It's true. Take nine, go fix. Thanks. Hmm. Good night. night. We are back in the cabin. Indeed we are. Indeed. <laughs> and Jade we are. No. Nice. Um, so yeah. How is your evening? It was really going? good, yeah. So the comedian was hilarious. I don't Actually, think you showed any of that. No, I don't think we're supposed to. But um, he's from the UK. Different kind of comedy with mm -hmm. some musical um, interludes that parody and things stuff, like that. Yeah, parodies. Mm -hmm. um, really funny. And then, of course, uh, Pete Best, which yes. I didn't really know a whole lot about him other than he was the original drummer for the Beatles before they like 
super, super took off. But, yeah. you know, they were still mildly famous when he was with them. And a um, really, really sweet guy, really interesting story. And he basically brought them together because, like, they where they started wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been there because it was so his true. parents' place, basically. Like, yeah. So really cool. Yeah. Now you say some words. <laughs> no, I don't have any words. But that was good. That was the best interview I've seen all day. <sighs> nice. Oh. I guess we don't really need to rip apart our dinner at uh, uh, Alfredo's. Alfredo's. Yep. It was good overall. Yeah. Any highlights, lowlights? Um, I got the calzone. I don't know if I would get it again. It didn't. It has ricotta. I don't love ricotta. Mm. That's my own thing. I panic ordered. But it was really good otherwise. <laughs> yeah, everything I had was good overall, I think. Yeah. My tiramisu was not, I mean, it was like a, an average tiramisu. It needed a little more like oomph moisture in there. But yeah. besides that, I liked everything I had. So, yeah, we're going to bed. Guess I'm tired. Where we are. A lot. <laughs> we're going to be in Liverpool tomorrow. Makes sense, right? The Beatles connection. All the Beatles stuff, yeah. We're going to be doing some more walking. Come back tomorrow. Good night, John. See you then.